Okay, so I think uh, today we'll be looking at the final chapter uh, of the book, which is chapter 13, where um, uh, we'll be looking at, uh, which is titled uh, Advice and, and Best uh, Practices uh, when we are creating uh, uh, data visualization. So uh, this uh, section mainly talks about uh, tricks in which once we have created our data visualization, tricks in which to improve uh, this uh, visualization uh, to make it more appealing once uh, our audience, they, they are going uh, through that data visualization because the main aim of every data visualization, uh, we must make it in such a way that uh, the message in which we are trying to what, uh, convey to our audience, uh, we must make it in such a way in which once they uh, look at this uh, visualization, it will be easy uh, for them to understand uh, the message in which uh, we are trying to pass across to them. So the first part of that, this book uh, chapter mainly talk about uh, labeling. And within the labeling, they talk about the title, the subtitle, uh, the, the caption, they, uh, they look at the axis label, and also I think the legend. So they said for the title, we should make it as simple as possible, we should make uh, this title to be more uh, captivating because that is uh, the first thing in which the audience uh, they are going to look at. They say a clear, short title, letting the reader know uh, what they are looking at. So it's very, for example, uh, they make an example relationship between experience and wages by gender, which is very simple. But we can also break it down to have a subtitle which is an optional text. Uh, and this optional text is adding a additional information to the data visualization. So like example that they gave yes, which can be between 2016 and uh, 2018. So like for the caption, within the caption, we need to specify uh, the source, the source of the data, because we need to uh, make attribution. So in this web is this data set in which we are using for our data visualization. Where is it coming from? For example, they have source, uh, US Department of Labor, and this is also the, 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 the website link whereby we can, as, we can copy, we can just go to this in our browser. Then we can have access uh, to, uh, to see the source where this data set is coming from. Then for the axis label, uh, they talk about the x-axis label, the y-axis label, and each of these label we need to, if they have a unit, we need to also uh, ensure that uh, we provide uh, the unit so that you make it clear. For example, we have uh, engine displacement, we have survival time in days, we also have patient age, which is also in years. Uh, then for the legend, uh, the, for the legends, we can have something like male, or female, but they do want that we should not use something like zero or one for the legend because uh, we might not know what zeros uh, signify. The audience, we, they might not know what is zero or what is one. So uh, we, we need to make it simple as possible, like example, making use of female and also male. For the lines and bars, we need to label any trend lines notation lines and error bars. So we need to ensure that we label all this, uh, uh, any, if we have any trend line within uh, our data visualization, uh, we need to ensure that it is properly uh, labeled. And uh, in the next parts, uh, I talk about signal. Uh, it talk about, uh, Okay, I think Lydia, your, my internet is on still. I'm going to switch. Okay, there is no problem. Uh, signal to noise, uh, signal to noise, noise ratio. So, for example, they make, uh, they gave example of, uh, they gave example of this uh, data visualization, because if we look at uh, this data visualization, we can see. Uh, that is not really making sense. We are having type of food, which is French fries. We have potato chips, we have bacon, we have pizza, we have chili dog. And if you look at the legend, uh, all this information being represented in the legend, 
they are also here in the x-axis. And if you look at the uh, graphics, they have some a lot of grid lines, uh, which uh, which is not really uh, appealing once our reader uh, are going through this uh, 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 visualization. So think of all things are uh, superfluous. The time background border, they talk about uh, the time background border for these graphics. They also talk about the gray background color, which is this one we are looking at. They also talk about the 3D effects. These are all things uh, we need to remove. They also talk about the legend that it is it does not add anything to the bar, bars as already labeled because if you look at the legend, the legend is presenting the same food that has already been uh, shown uh, in the x-axis. They also talk about uh, the, the color of the bars, which don't uh, signify anything because once we look at color, we are trying to convert, uh, compare between bacon and other food type, but we are using different color. It becomes uh, very difficult uh, for uh, our audience to really uh, to really, de really decode uh, the message in which uh, this visualization is trying to pass across. So once uh, the once they try to what uh, declutter this, try to modify this, so they came forward uh, with this uh, visualization where they, they replace the title, which is what calories by food. They try to modify the titles to be calories by food. The y-axis label they modify it to be calories per 100 grams. So they remove the x-axis uh, title, they remove it because it has already been presented. We have uh, French fries, we have potato chips, back on pizza and chili dogs. So they only highlighted the back on because we are trying to compare this back on to other, to other food types. So, but they still retain uh, this, uh, uh, mid, mid, grid lines, they still mid, retain uh, this grid line. So we can see it in this new, our latest uh, visualization that the X axis level isn't needed because we already know that these are the food. We can see that the Y axis is giving a better label, which is calories per, per, calories per 100 gram. We can also see that the title has been simplified. We can also see that the title uh, let's see the I'm going okay. through. Oh, uh, just making a comment regarding okay, like okay. comparing okay. the two graphs. Yeah, okay. the fact that they had color in the other one, that's why it made the legend. And I didn't yes. I didn't even think about the fact that the color was like provided no use. And then yes, so yes, you, yes. The other one, yeah. Yes, thank you for that comment. Sir. So we also look at uh, the title has been simplified because the word difference uh, in redundant. Because if you look at the initial title, we are having one calories per one hundred gram for different foods. So we now have calories. Uh, uh, calories. The number modifies to be calories uh, by food, which is ma they make it most they simplify uh, the title. So if you also look at the grid lines, have been made lighter gray than black, so they don't distract. So we can see that it is clear. It is very clear for uh, uh, our audience uh, to really read uh, these uh, graphics. It will be clear because this grid line they can trace. Okay, this one is uh, around 600. This one they can easily trace once uh, they are going uh, through uh, this uh, this data data visualization. So, uh, in the book also for for this other part about color, uh, I think uh, they they do mention that the color choice is about is about more than aesthetics. Choose color that we should choose color that convey the information. As uh, as content as content uh, in the in the data visualization because uh, that the link I post in the chat is about an article uh, which talk about how to use uh, color palettes uh, in uh, visualization how to use it uh, uh, in a better way so 
basically, uh, when we are looking at color at Inca, we have three different types. We need to have sequential for plotting uh, quantitative variables from low to high. We also have diverging color palettes for contrasting extremes, which we may have low, uh, medium, and high. We can also have uh, qualitative for distinguishing among the levels of a categorical variable. So, so these are all palettes in which we can make use uh, in our data visualization. And if we also look at, uh, we can also see that in R, there are several other uh, color, there are some color palettes. Uh, I think the R color brewer package, R color brewer, R color. I'm just coming. Library. Our color. Our color. Our color brewer. We can display all the palettes. Display the brew. We can display all these color palettes. So it's also a starting color palette. We can see that we have, uh, we can see the three uh, different type of color palettes in which we have the, the sequential, the divergent, and then also we can see the three different type of color palettes in which uh, they, do, uh, they were trying to talk about in the book, the sequential, the divergent, and the qualitative, which, is, which we mainly use uh, for categorical variables. So, you know, so we can choose within one of those color palettes and we, we apply it uh, to our visualization. Uh, I think, okay, they also mentioned the package here, yeah, Corobrewa. So uh, for going further, they also talk about uh, the y-axis scaling. So how do we scale uh, our y-axis uh, in our data visualization. So they were making use uh, of this uh, data set, which is uh, which come from the car data uh, package, which is the salaries data. So they load the uh, library, uh, deploy R, then they, they call the salaries data, and then they filter all the rank that are associate professor, and then they group, uh, they group it by the sex variable, and then they summarize N, which is going to give us all the counts. They look for the mean of all the salary, the standard deviation of all the salary. And here they look for the standard error and also confidence interval. So they, and they assign all these to a variable called DF. So once are they call, once they call DF, you can see we have in sex, which is female and male. We have the counts, female is 11, male is 56. These are the main value. This is the standard error, uh, standard deviation, standard error, and also uh, the 95% uh, confidence interval. So once uh, they, they now went for that to visualize this, they load initialize, they load the ggplot2 package. So they say ggplot, they pass in the data, aesthetic, they did the aesthetic mapping, and then geometry, they say should be points, size of the points should be four, then zoom line, then scale y uh, continuous, then the limits for the y-axis should go from $77,000 to $82,000. So they use the label scales dollar to convert y-axis to put it in a dollar format. Then for the laps, so the title, which is the main salary difference by gender, the subtitle is nine months academic salary in 2017 to 2018. Then the caption, the CPS source of the data set, the, the edition, uh, second edition stage. So the X axis, they name it to be gender. Y axis, uh, they use salary. And then they use uh, scale uh, Y continuous again. Then they say labels, uh, they say scales dollar, dollar format. So first, we plot this uh, using 77,000 to 82,000. So what's, what do we have? So, 
So we can see uh, when we plot uh, the first one, we can see that we have a lot of uh, difference. Uh, we can see that we it appears we have very large gender difference because uh, we can see we have a very large uh, gender difference uh, in this uh, data visualization. Uh, but when we make adjustment to the y-axis scale, if we set it, should go from zero to 125,000. So here we say P plus scale Y continuous. We set the limits to go from zero uh, to 125,000. So once we visualize that, we see that we do not have, we do not have any, we do not have enough uh, difference. So we can see that within scale, that uh, we can we can easily apply some transformation to the plots and it might present uh, the data in different way to our audience. So you can see that these two visualization is passing along two dif different messages to our audience. So once uh, we are, they make some advice that is always good in the y-axis, once we are labeling the plots, it's always good. We always start it from zero points, it should always start from zero. That is, it should go from zero to the max where we have uh, the maximum value. So we should always specify the limits because at times I will create some visualization, but I always forget uh, to do this. But when I'm reading through this chapter, uh, they do recommend that we should always ensure that we set the limits. We should always go from zero to the, uh, to the maximum point. That is for the Y uh, axis. So once, uh, yes, yes, yes. I think uh, is we in the two visualization we get we get two because we are passing two different message. So we are going to see difference because in this one we do not start from we do not start the y axis uh, from zero. In this other one, uh, we limit it. We start from zero and it should go up to around one hundred and. Uh, 25,000. So we can see that the two graphs, uh, we see there is a big difference uh, between those two graphs. So in this other case, we want to add some annotation to those plots. We added the error bar, which is geom error bar aesthetics. Y minimum is equals to mean minus confidence interval. Y maximum is mean uh, plus uh, confidence interval. We set the width to be 0.1. Then we do some annotation to add some text on it. We have text, the label should be one bar, I bars, 95% confidence uh, interval. Then we say X2, X is equals to two, uh, Y is equals to 73,500. Then we say font face should be italics. Then the size should be three. So once we do that, we can see that we have added some text uh, annotations to the plot. We have added uh, the error bar. We have also added uh, some text annotation on the plot, uh, which we will now make uh, it easy uh, for maybe somebody that is uh, reading uh, our data visualization in which we have created. It will be easy for them to go through. They can say, oh, this is error bar. This error bar uh, represents 95% uh, uh, percent, uh, confidence uh, interval. So because they might look at this visualization, they can say, okay, this is error bar, but they don't not know, is this standard deviation from the data or is it standard error? So we need to really specify because they, they don't need to go and read through the text before they get this information. But if there is a way in which uh, we can just add some annotation, put all those information on the graph. So, it will be it, it makes the graph to be very simple and and clear the message in which uh, uh, we are trying uh, to pass across uh, to our audience. So they also talk about attribution in this uh, in the book. So that they said unless it is your data, each graphic should come with an attribution, a note directing the reader to the source of the data. This will usually appear in the caption of the graph because in the caption of the graph, we need to provide background information about the data in which we are using uh, to create our data visualization. What is the source of those data? 
uh, so that uh, the user uh, can know where the data is coming from. So in the last part, uh, they talk about uh, going further, going further uh, on how to improve uh, our data visualization skill. Uh, they do recommend uh, the homepage of ggplot2. They do recommend that we should look at uh, ggplot2, uh, the website, the homepage. Let me just open it in the new tab. They do recommend that we should look at uh, the homepage uh, of ggplot2, which is the way we can see that we have, we can install, we can see the cheat sheets from this homepage. We can see some example in which uh, they give, they say we should read through the homepage, look at all the documentation so that we understand uh, how uh, the package work. They also recommend the ggplot2 book, which is elegant uh, uh, graphics for graphics. So they say we should also consult uh, we should also consult this uh, very this book, which is very uh, useful. Uh, if you want we want to learn about, uh, they also recommend the ebook R for data science. They also look at uh, ggplot2 uh, ggplot2 cheat sheets, which is another source in which they recommend. They also talk about the Harvard Business Review, a visualization that really work. Uh, is also another source in which uh, they say we should consult uh, for going forward further to learn uh, most a visualization that really works uh, by Scott uh, Berinato. So this is also a very uh, useful source in which they recommend uh, we should consult if we want to learn more on how they also look at the website. Information is beautiful. They also talk about the data, the data book, beautiful data, the stories be, behind elegant uh, data solutions. They also look at uh, the Wall Street Journal, a guide uh, to information graphics, uh, the book, The Truthful Art. I think this is a very, very good book about that talks about uh, data uh, visualization. It's a very good book. Uh, we also have storytelling with data, which is another uh, which is another good book in which I know about uh, data uh, about uh, data uh, visualization. So the, uh, for the final notes for this for the final notes, he said with the growth of readily available data, the field of data visualization is exploding. That is 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 growing every day. This explosion is supported by availability of exciting new graphical tools. And it is a great time uh, to learn and uh, learn and explore that we should also uh, let, uh, enjoy all this, working with all these uh, tools in order for us to improve uh, our, our data visualization skill. I think uh, that is uh, basically uh, all I have for this chapter. It's a big, a short chapter for the con really contain a lot of content. Yeah, this was a really good chapter. Um, and thank you so much for the presentation. Um, yeah, I love this because it's like you can start making your data viz and then like, but not really consider all the little details of how it will be conveyed to like the person who's looking at it. So like, I really like that they have this chapter with like the advice and best practices. Thank you very much for your feedback. Yeah, so I'm wondering, like before we go, I know we have a little bit of time. I don't know if anyone wants to share like, what was your favorite chapter or like, what was one thing you learned that you never knew before? Um, for me, I really liked the chapter on like um, interactive graphs. Um, there's another book that I'm interested in reading, the one about Plotly. And yeah, I really liked that chapter. Um, and then I also learned a lot about like the time dependent graphs. So yeah, those two chapters in particular, I really liked them and appreciated them. Okay, I think my own, I really like uh, the, 
chapter that was talking about where we look at different type of correlation graph, look at uh, the correlation matrix, and also this other chapter, because uh, as I said earlier, there are some at times in which when I create uh, my data visualization, I fail to maybe specify that, oh, my y-axis must always start from fossil origins, from zero origin. At times, I used to miss that, I just send it that way. But when reading this chapter, they, I think they recommend that we should ensure that everything starts at the origin. Yeah, for sure. How about Ken Katomi, any, any last thoughts in the book? All right, Ken is in the chat, I'll read it. Um, my favorite one is the one that introduced unconventional graphs that are hard to categorize, like the dumbbell plot, for example, and the node map. I'm someone who likes to expand many ways to tell stories, so knowing what other plots I can do is definitely helpful. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the one the one with kind of like the miscellaneous graphs that didn't fit in anywhere. Yeah, that was a good chapter, too. I mean, generally, this is just a good book. <laughs> I really enjoyed reading this. And, yeah, I really appreciate like y'all joining and participating. It was, yeah, really appreciate it. This was really fun and hopefully get to see you guys in like other book clubs as well. But yeah, so I guess this concludes um, data visualization with R um, by Rob Kabakoff. Um, Femi, thank you again so much for your presentation today. And thank you all for joining. Um, yeah, again, look forward to seeing you in other book clubs. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye, everyone. Yeah, thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you.